guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. Today I have another unboxing video for you. Kami sent me their newest tenor scale banjo lele to unbox and review. So let's get started. So here we go. Let's take it out of the box and see what we got. Alrighty, so here's the instrument, which I'll speak to in a moment. And it also came with some accessories that are here in the box. Okay, before we dive into the instrument, let's go ahead and quickly look at some of the accessories that came with this. First of all, this instrument does come with a, an electronic tuner. And also interestingly, it comes with a piezo, which has like a uh, uh, like a uh, sticky back, so you can stick it on the banjo to project it. It also comes with three uh, guitar picks. It comes with an extra set of strings, which are unbranded, and it comes with a very substantial shoulder strap. And you may note it has these special clips on it here so that you can clip it onto the hardware of the banjo. So let's go ahead and look at this. You can see this comes with a, a gig bag, which is good because uh, there aren't a lot of tenor scale ukuleles or banjo ukuleles out there. So that it comes with a gig bag is a good thing. This does have two basic webbing shoulder straps, a basic webbing uh, handle on it. It has the Kami's logo on it and a sort of a thin, not very deep, um, a pocket on it. And this looks like the typical Kami's uh, gig bags. It's probably, oh, 10 millimeters worth of uh, padding on it. And the big reveal. Okay, you can also see that this instrument also comes with uh, this tool for adjusting the hardware on the instrument. It also comes with a bridge which does need to be mounted. Also it comes with an Allen wrench for adjusting the truss rod. You can also see that it comes with a basic four string banjo bridge which includes uh, the maple lower portion with an ebony cap. So for the big reveal Okay, so there we go. Okay, you can see it has the the uh, typical uh, Kami's inlaid logo. It has some basic closed geared tuners. Again, there does appear to be a mahogany veneer on the headstock. This instrument in the nomenclature is described as being sapele. So I don't know if that is just the neck they're talking about or if it is the the ring of the uh, of the instrument, uh, because it does look like it has what appears to be like a mahogany veneer on both the back and uh, the sides there. Uh, but you can see um, it does have a dark fretboard, which again right now is covered with that piece of plastic, which I'll take off. It has a dark fretboard. The material is not described in the uh, description on Amazon. It does appear to have this uh, sort of white or cream colored uh, ABS binding on it with position markers on the side as well as position markers on the face. And I should say that because of that binding, this thing is very, very smooth. There are no sharp fret ends there. Uh, again, from looking at this, there don't appear to be any obvious uh, imperfections or flaws in the finish. The finish looks good. Uh, again, I can see it does have the, the uh, truss rod cover here, so you can adjust sort of the, the curve of the neck. Also inside, there's a communication rod that you can use for making slight adjustments in the angle of the neck. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and position the bridge and uh, bring this up to pitch and give you a quick sound sample. You can see from the shiny stuff here on the fretboard, it has this guide for positioning the saddle. Basically what you do is you just put that guide up at the end of the nut 
and you then will position the saddle at the end of that guide right there. I want to talk for a minute about this, uh, the tail piece here and talk about how this works and the little issue I saw that might present a problem. The first thing is, as you can see from looking at the underside of this tail piece, that the strings are basically tied in a knot and then they're brought up through a hole in the tail piece. And for the thicker strings, it looks like they just tied the one string in a knot for each of these two strings. If you look underneath there, you can see those, those knots they've created. But for the two uh, treble strings here, what they did was they, they tied those two strings together. So the big knot here is right under or right over the hole for the, uh, for the, the second string. But the A string is going across the back of this uh, tailpiece and then cutting through that hole at a 90 degree angle. But you can see that it is um, basically fraying that string because you can see it's cutting through there at a 90 degree angle from the underside before it breaks and comes up to the body. And so uh, as I'm tuning this up, this string has actually been kind of scraped thinner right there. So I'm guessing because that string was not individually knotted, I'm guessing that may well pop. This is a cookie tin banjo lele that I built. And you can see what I did on this was I put these little ball ends on the strings uh, to keep them from pulling through. And I think that may be worthwhile doing on this. I have now brought this instrument up to pitch. And if I didn't say it before, this instrument is 26 inches long and it has a 17 inch scale. So it is a true uh, tenor banjo lele or banjo ukulele. So again, this is tuned re-entrantly, GCEA. And the strings are still settling a bit. So there you go, it certainly sounds like a banjo. So there you have it, a first looks at the new Kami's Tenor Scale Banjo Lele. I hope you found today's unboxing video uh, helpful or useful for you. If you did, please give a thumbs up. I'll go ahead and play this for the next couple weeks or so and come back and give you a full review and I will compare it to the Kami's Concert Scale Ukulele at the same time. Thanks for watching.